Hey guys, um, my uh, my wife and our, our three-year-old son, uh, Tristan, uh, we popped uh, back to Kelowna pretty quick after, after this thing hit and uh, we just had a little bit more space for him to run around and uh, burn off a little bit more energy so he can sleep in a little bit longer. Uh, so we, we headed back home here and uh, uh, just been just been here since and, and spending the time uh, with each other during this quarantine. And I'll open up a call here from Jeff Patterson next. Hey Tyler, how you doing? Good, how are you Jeff? Yeah, hanging in like everybody I suppose. Uh, look, you've had a chance over many years in the NHL to play for a bunch of different coaching staffs. I'm kind of curious, you know, what did you find worked what worked for you um with travis and nolan i suppose to a degree as well what kind of stood out um, in your first year uh playing for those two uh i mean i i think the first thing that i noticed is uh you could tell right away both of them uh played the game uh you know them being ex-players you can tell they um you know, have a good understanding of how things work, uh, what players go through on a day-to-day -day basis uh, throughout the season. And uh, I think in that sense, it made it, uh, it made both of them very approachable. Uh, I found out pretty quick when I joined the team. Um, every conversation I had with, uh, with Travis and Nolan was very easy, uh, very honest. And, uh, you know, it, it almost seemed like I was talking to one of the guys uh, in the room, but, uh, you know, obviously there's a, there's a, uh, you know, a, a accountability factor, uh, from coach to player, um, just like on any team. But, uh, I think the, one of the first things you notice is, uh, you know, their approachability. When you look back now, um, and I know you came in for the visit and sat down with Travis and others before you signed, uh, are you happy with the role and the ice time and everything else that the way it unfolded in your first year? Yeah, I was really happy. Um, you know, as you, as you start to get older, you realize, uh, you know, it goes by so, so fast and you, you really don't know how much time you're going to have in terms of, you know, uh, whether an injury might pop up, whether you're, you might be done after your next contract, uh, no matter how long it is. So, you know, you, you want to do every, everything you can to, to hoist that Stanley Cup. So, uh, you know, I, I think uh, for me, who's been around a while, uh, you, try and, you try and implement a mindset to, to younger guys of, uh, you know, you, you do everything you can to win a Stanley Cup. And, uh, you know, that means whatever role you're given, you do it the best you can every day and, uh, and just, and just have fun doing it. So, uh, I was really happy uh, with the way things were going this year. It's too bad. Uh, you know, it, it took a turn there at the end, uh, just with everything that's going on right now. But, um, you know, I, I really like our group. I, I like the direction it's heading. And, uh, you know, I, I think we have a really good young core coming up. Great. Thanks. Hey, guys. Uh, sorry about that. Ian McIntyre is up next. Hey, Tyler. How are you doing? Good. How are you? I'm pretty well. Thank you, uh, all things considered. You, a lot of people on this team, and, and you were one of them, as one of the older players had talked about how important it was to go through this process of, you know, playing these hard games down the stretch. And, it seemed like the intensity level for the team had come up just as the season was about to be halted. How much does it hurt not to have sort of seen that through to the end? And, you know, are the younger guys missing out by not, by not getting those games in March and at the start of April? I mean, I, I, I would say everyone's missing out. Uh, you know, this is, it's such, it's a, such a unique situation for everybody, but, uh, you know, like you said, I, I really thought our group, uh, started to, I think we started to get a lot better with our consistency. I think, uh, you know, as the year went on, that was, um, one of the things we were working on as a group 
And I think it was getting better. And like you said, right, right towards the end, uh, before everything shut down, um, you know, we were really trending in the right direction, I thought. And, uh, but certainly, um, you know, missing out on, uh, on the last, you know, month, month of the season there, uh, it's such a, you know, it, you, it really develops such a playoff atmosphere and a playoff feel on the ice that, um, you know, our, uh, it would have been nice for our young guys to experience that. Uh, but, you know, the whole league's in the same boat. Uh, you know, every team is missing out in that sense. And just to, if I can have one quick follow, Ben, um, are, are you one of the guys who's kind of watches every day to see what the latest scenario is floated and and because it, it seems like such a fluid situation some weeks it looks bleak other weeks people seem hopeful that you're going to be back at some point what is that like and and how do you feel generally about the idea that you might be playing hockey in july and august uh it's a, it's a weird feeling um <laughs> but you know I have a routine every morning. I get up with the little guy, throw on the news and see what's going on. Uh, but like you said, it seems to be, you know, a lot of ups and downs um, in terms of it's getting better. It's not getting better. Uh, so, you know, I, I would love to have a chance to finish the year. It's just, you know, I, I'm just, you know, just like everyone else, uh, I'm so new to this situation. I, you know, I just really have no idea what it could look like. I, I think, uh, you know, just more time has to go by to to see uh, what what could even be possible. Because right now it just seems like, you know, I just have no clue. <laughs> Brendan Batchelor has got the next question. Hey, Tyler, just wondering uh, how much you've enjoyed the family time aspect of it. You talk about, you know, getting up early with the youngster. Has that been a... a a silver lining through all of this missing the season for sure I you know I think the best part of you know any any time you go back for an off season is is you get more family time uh you know it seems uh seems like uh you know all the dads on the team were gone for a lot of a lot of milestones uh for all the all the dads that have kids uh, which is which is tough to handle sometimes, uh, and that's what's that's what's so nice about being home uh, during the off season is you get that family time and you get to you get to spend that much more time with uh, your family, um, you know, just your family now since we're all in quarantine. <laughs> but uh, you know, it's it's always a good feeling, and uh, yeah, I guess it it feels like the off season right now. Uh, you know, you try and stay in shape uh, just in case it does come back, uh, whenever that may be. Um, so yeah, it just has a very off season feel right now with, uh, you know, there's all, there's a lot of hope between, you know, myself and the rest of the family that it does return at some point. On the other side of that spectrum, there's some talk that if games do return, that players might have to stay in hotels and away from their families throughout the duration potentially of, of playoffs how difficult would that aspect of it be just in terms because they're they don't have their place anymore no because like if you return to play there was talk that maybe players would all have to stay in hotels to limit the spread and so therefore if you know games resume with no fans in the summer you might have to spend an extended time away from your family yeah that would suck <laughs> um, you know it, you know, one of the one of the great things about you know being in season and uh, you know there's so many high stress situations throughout a season that it's uh, you know one of the best parts is is going home to your family. Um, you know, there's such a big part of of uh, you know your life and and what you go through. Um, you know, they don't get talked a lot. Of, uh, you know, they don't get talked about a lot in terms of you know, how much they do for you, uh, in your hockey career. So, uh, there's such a big part of, uh, you know, your mental positivity, I guess, when, uh, you know, when high stressful situations happen throughout the season. So that, that would definitely be tough. And, uh, one more from me, Ben, uh, I'm just wondering how active the group chat is right now, Tyler, with uh, your teammates. And uh, if there's one guy in there that might be chirping more than the rest. 
I, I would say our group chat's pretty active the whole year. Uh, you know, not just, uh, you know, since things stopped here, but, um, if I had to, if I had to name one guy, uh, who likes to, likes to keep her going. Um, I can tell you that Jay Beagle's not that guy. I think he's texted the group chat once. <laughs> But uh, uh, Millsy's always uh, Millsy's always making me uh, chuckle during the group chat, so he's he's probably up there. Josh Clipperton's up next. Great, uh, thanks for doing this, Tyler. Um, just it's looking more and more like the the NHL draft, whether it be done remotely, online, or in a hotel at some point. Having gone through that process yourself in in two thousand eight, do you feel for guys that won't get to experience? that with their families and what was that like for your family and yourself? Yeah, that would, that would be tough. Uh, you know, especially for all the draft eligible guys. Uh, you know, my experience was, you know, it, it, it's such an amazing experience as a, as a young player at, you know, 18 years old. Uh, it's such a, you know, to be part of such a big stage, uh, you know, and have an event like that, uh, it's a pretty special moment for a hockey player. So, you know, for those guys who are potentially going to miss out on that, that, uh, you know, that's, yeah, it's not a good feeling. And just a quick follow-up. Um, a lot of classic NHL games are being shown right now. I'm wondering if you've watched any of them and what you think of the style of play, the, what guys are allowed to get, get away with uh, penalty wise, the equipment or the goalies in the seventies, eighties, and nineties. Yeah, it's pretty funny to, to see the differences. Uh, you know, watching watching those games and and seeing what the what the game is like now, um, you know, it's uh, a lot of clutching and grabbing, a lot of things that you can't get away with. Um, you know, I think uh, I think with the changes they've made, that's part of the reason why uh, the game just seems so much faster these days. Uh, and you know, watching the game back then, it's just a lot harder. Um, so it's it just lo it looks like. You know, with uh, with it being the same game, there's just so many differences that make it, uh, you know, quite unusual to watch. And just a quick follow up on that point, I talked to another defenseman who said he kind of wishes he'd be able to slow guys up um, the way they used to. I mean, as a defenseman, how how much do you maybe are jealous of of defensemen that were able to maybe get a, a split second more time back then? Yeah, I mean, you see some of the the hooks and the grabs uh, in games back then. It would. It would definitely make it easy, easier on us defensemen. Um, I think that's why you always hear uh, nowadays uh, about how you want guys to be able to, you know, be good skaters because you can't. That's what you have to use to try and defend guys these days is your feet. And uh, you know, as soon as you start clutching and grabbing, you're, you know, you're in the box for two minutes. Great. Thanks a lot for doing this. Appreciate it. No worries. I'm going to go back to Ian McIntyre. Uh, you guys are, are kind of in no man's land right now in the standings, uh, technically out of the playoffs on points, but you're slightly in on, on winning percentage. Um, what do you think this team is capable of? If you play more games this season, what, what is, what could this team do? Well, I think all of us in the room, you know, we see, we see ourselves as a playoff team. Uh, you know, it's, it's impossible to, you know, tell what, what could have happened in the last 15 games or whatever it was. But, um, you know, I, I really liked our strides uh, that we made this year. Uh, you know, I really hope we're able to come back and, and try and end it off on a good note. Like we, you know, get back that feeling that we had before it ended. Um but like you said, it's just a lot of unknowns right now. And, uh, you know, we've had, we've had discussions as a group of how we want to make sure we stay up on uh, staying in shape and, and making sure we're ready in case this thing uh, does come back, uh, you know, at any time. And uh, we just, you know, with, with, the possibility, with the possibility of us being able to finish the year, we just don't want to lose um, – we don't want to take any steps backwards. So we're trying to, we're trying to talk to each other and figure out how to, 
you know, make sure we're still uh, ready to go if this thing comes back. Is there anything that makes this team special from other good teams that you've been on? Uh, I guess when you think about that question, it's, you know, our young core comes to mind right away. I think, you know, with all of our young guys, uh, you know, they're such drivers of the team right now. And I think, uh, you know, the development they showed this year, I think was, uh, was more than people were expecting. And, uh, you know, I think the mix of those young guys with some of the veterans, we, uh, a few more veterans we have in the room now, I think it, it came together really well. And I think, uh, I think it showed that I, I think it showed in the fact that we we got more consistent uh, with our with our team game, uh, which which I think that was lacking a little bit uh, at the start of the season. So uh, we got a really good mix, but you know when you look at our young core and you know our first, second, third year guys, they're you know beyond their years for sure. And I know that of the thirty one teams probably 25 or more of them were excited about what they might do this spring had they had they kept playing on your team you know Jacob is is a, a UFA Tyler Toffoli looked like a great pickup but who knows you know where he stands you've got young players who are on entry-level contracts which seems to be a key right now where if you can have some success with at, at bargain rates do you have any kind of sense that there's you know, maybe any more riding uh, on your club as far as being able to finish this season than other teams just because of who might, may or may not be back next year? Uh, it's tough to say. I, I don't, you know, I don't know the ins and out of every other team. Uh, but, um, you know, I think, <laughs> I think with what's going on and uh, what happened, uh, you know, it's creating such a different environment for every group, uh, for every team that, you know, uh, everybody's going to get affected by it. And I guess, you know, you just, a lot of it right now is just waiting, waiting to see, you know, what the cap could be, what, um, you know, if we're going to return at all, uh, if, you know, if we do return, are we going to, play some regular season games and then playoffs or jump right into the playoffs. How's that format going to be? So there's just so many unknowns right now. And, uh, but yeah, I mean, I think, I think with our group and, and the development that we showed and the, the strides that we took this year, I think the, you know, the best approach is just trying to, you know, try and keep, keep everyone as best you can. Uh, you know, I, I really like where the team's heading and, um, you know, I, I've, I've been a part of those teams where, you know, you have too much turnover. It's a little tough to, to get things going again. So, um, you know, I like our group and I, I hope we're able to keep, uh, keep all of it together. Thank you. Yep. Thomas Trance has the next question. Tyler, you've talked a lot about, the young core, the strides you guys have made, trying to impart some wisdom in terms of that competitive focus on winning a cup. You've been through the process previously with, with a Jets team that was sort of a, a young developing club. You came in when they were a fringe playoff team, sort of grew into a contender together. When you frame the first season, I know you didn't get to finish it, that you've had in Vancouver with some of those experiences, like how does it compare and are there any sort of similarities you see between the two groups now that you've sort of got a season under your belt in Vancouver? Yeah, I mean, I think that's a good question because I've actually, I've actually had, you know, thoughts. I, th I think it's natural to compare what you've been through in the past to, to what's going on uh, in your current situation. So, uh, you know, I, I take a look at that year in Winnipeg where, uh, you know, we almost, uh, you know, we almost made it to the final, uh, had a tough series against Vegas. Uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of similarities I can take uh, from my experience uh, with my first year here in Vancouver uh, to that team. Uh, you know, one, one of them being, 
you know, there was such a solid um, dynamic core in Winnipeg that, you know, it seemed like when we got to that point, they were able to filter, you know, a piece here, a piece there, instead of, you know, I, I talked about turnover before, instead of, you know, moving too many guys in and out of the lineup. And I think, you know, my experience, uh, you know, my first year here in Vancouver, it's very much the same. I think we have such a good, solid core group of guys, you know, you you add in uh, a piece here and there to, you know, keep developing your team and keep making it as best you can on paper. Um, you know, I think, I guess what I'm trying to say is we're, we're close and we're close to that point of becoming a winning team. It's just a matter of, uh, you know, one being experienced um, and, and getting that feeling of what it takes to win. And part of that is getting that experience in playoffs. So, uh, you know, I guess that gets back to, uh, I think, sorry if I'm wrong, was it Ian's question of, uh, you know, does it hurt the young guys not getting that experience? It, it definitely does. But like I said, it hurts every team. And, um, you know, I think for us, it's just, it's just trying to keep helping the young guys, uh, you know, be as prepared as they can when we do get there. Tyler, with your routine, and in addition to um, some of your parenting responsibilities and following the news every morning, um, do you have like a list of choice picks, whether it's been a good meal you guys have cooked or some movies you've watched or, or a book you've had some time to read uh, from this sort of time social distancing? Um. I mean, every day, every day seems like it's the same. Uh, <laughs> get up with the little guy. Uh, we have breakfast together. And then uh, I go, I go down for a workout and my wife takes over and then she goes down for her workout. And then, uh, you know, it takes up most of the morning. So we put the little guy down for a nap. And then usually every day after his nap, he, he goes crazy over the hot tub. So we go, splash around with them in the hot tub and that that seems to take up most of our most of our day and then I guess uh uh the missus and I are really into uh killing Eve right now that's our that's our new show so that's keeping us uh keeping us busy a lot of a lot of Netflix a lot of a lot of crave uh and just uh enjoying the family time uh that's a good pick and just the last one for me in terms of your uh, workouts, maintaining your fitness. Uh, do you have the full gym in Kelowna? And, and as you consider the possibility that, you know, after an extended time off, you might have two, three weeks to sort of ramp back up. What are some of the challenges that you consider as you work through uh, that routine at the moment? Yeah, I mean, that was, that was a big reason why we popped back home, home to Kelowna. Uh, you know, I, I had put a gym in my place, so I, I had a lot better uh, opportunity to you know, stay, stay in shape and, and stay up to date, uh, you know, in case this thing comes back, you know, especially if it comes back, uh, you know, very abruptly. Um, but yeah, if, uh, you know, we've heard, we've heard so many things. If, you know, if there, if we're, if we are able to return, uh, you know, I, there's been a pretty consistent, uh, you know, consensus that we we would get those, uh, you know, two, three weeks to kind of ramp back up kind of a pseudo training camp. So, uh, you know, I think, I think that would definitely be necessary. Uh, you know, I, especially with not really being able to skate right now, we'd really have to get kind of back in the skating shape. Uh, I'm sure all the guys would say that across the league, but, uh, you know, it's, um, it's such a it's such a weird situation and uh we're just trying to you know talking with all the guys everyone's just trying to do the best they can to, to stay with it thanks man stay safe you too uh next uh, questions come from ben kuzma who's been patiently waiting on phone hey tyler good afternoon thanks for doing this appreciate it no worries 
Um, Gary Bettman spoke this morning about uh, seven teams being on the playoff bubble and trying to have some sort of a fair and a season with integrity if you guys get back to playing. Of course, we all know that means two weeks of, of quarantine when players come back from Europe, per se, some sort of a training camp. Maybe even, I don't know if you could even have an exhibition season to finish out the regular season and then maybe get into the playoffs. Uh, you've been very fortunate in the last three seasons, including this one, knock on wood, uh, where you've been healthy. You've had your challenges in the past with injuries and surgeries, Tyler. I'm just, I'm just wondering, how concerned are you that you might not have enough time to get yourselves ramped up uh, physically and make sure you're in top shape? How worried are you about injuries if this thing gets back on the ice and gets going too quickly uh, with not enough games to really get yourselves properly prepared what could be a, a playoff run? Uh I'm not, I'm not too worried about it. Um, you know, I guess it would, uh, it would come down to what, you know, the plan is in terms of, uh, you know, returning to play. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure uh, all the players in the PA would want to make sure that, you know, each team gets the necessary um, time to, to get ready and make sure you know, you limit that risk of, of injury, but I, I guess that's the same, you know, the same feeling when you're returning to, you know, play coming, coming in off and off season as well. So uh, I'd be a lot more worried if I wasn't working out right now, but you know, I, I feel pretty good. Yeah. I feel like I've been staying up with things pretty well. Um, you know, I, I've learned a lot over my career of, you know, what, what I need to do to, to stay healthy. And I know there's freak injuries and everything, but uh, you know, I've, especially the last few years, you know, like you said, knock on wood, uh, stayed pretty healthy. And I think that has a lot to do with uh, changing up what I do in the gym and everything. But um, you know, I, I'm sure everyone will take the necessary steps to, to make sure guys are ready before they're, before they're thrown into the fire again, if, uh, if we're able to return. And a uh, second query from me. Uh, one thing I'm, I'm kind of curious about, you touched on this earlier, Tyler, you have this uh, interesting communication going on with the coaching staff. And a lot of this has to do with, you know, where you are at as a 30 year old veteran in this league. I mean, a lot of guys are kind of set in their ways, but you really embrace all this, right? You really embrace the communication, the video and applying it on the ice. Um, uh, what, what's that all about? Because, you know, as players get older, they kind of tend to get set in their ways. Why are you so open to everything? Well, I think I've actually gotten better with that as I, you know, as the years have gone on in my career, uh, you know, I, as a younger, as a younger kid, I would, I wouldn't necessarily, uh, you know, go back to the coach's room to have a conversation. And now I, you know, I do it like it's no problem. Uh, so I, I've changed, I've changed that way, you know, as my career has gone on and, you know, uh, I think, you know, as any player gets older, uh, you have to, um, you know, you have to realize it doesn't become easier. So, you know, you still have to put in the same amount of work, uh, you know, work that much harder uh, to make sure you're, you're, st you're staying up to speed and that you're, you know, still an effective player in the league. So, uh, you know, I just keep that in the back of my head and, um, you know, I still have a tremendous amount of fun going to the rink every day. I love, I love the camaraderie in the, in the dressing room, uh, every day, you know, joking around with the guys. So, uh, you know, that, that hasn't changed since, you know, I was 20 years old. So, um, you know, I, I try and go into the rink with a smile on my face, um, and, and work as hard as I can to, you know, I, I, I truly believe that no matter what age you are in the league, you can still, you can still look to get better. So, um, you know, I still have that drive to do that. And, you know, until I start losing that, uh, you know, I, you know, I don't really see uh, a difficulty for me to, to have that feeling to, um, you know, enjoy coming, uh, coming in as a, as a guy who's been around a while. Thanks, Tyler. Uh, no worries. Our last question comes from Rob Williams. Oh, one second. I just muted Rob. 
<laughs> hey, Tyler. Um, JT Miller said uh, he listed you as one of the players that he would most want to be quarantined with during this break from the, from the team. So I got to know uh, who would you most and least want to be quarantined among your Canucks teammates? Um, I, hadn't, I hadn't thought about this. I've seen, I've seen guys get asked this. I should have been prepared. Um, Lee, least quarantined. Uh, I'm trying to, I'm trying to run through everyone's stall in the room right now. Um, <laughs> I, I love I love the guy, but at least quarantine would be would be uh, Jake, just because our lives are at such different points right now. I it would be <laughs> be so chaotic. Uh, uh, but uh, most quarantined, probably probably Brandon Sutter, just because I feel like we're on the same page in terms of. Uh, we're, we're, we're two, we're two guys who are big treatment guys. So I feel like we'd just be on the same page every day, uh, working out, getting treatment and then spending family time. So I think we'd have the same routine. Tyler, thank you so much for taking the time today. Um, thank you all for joining us. Uh, we'll try to keep this, uh, tradition alive next week, uh, and we'll let you know who our guest is, uh, into the new week. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, guys.